Everybody see my slides? Here we are here. Hear me? Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Otto. Um, hopefully, you can follow me on Twitter, where I try to post a lot of uh, nicely looking Scala code. I try to find like a really elegant examples of uh, Scala, and especially with Zio, and post that. So, uh, if you're curious about how to make your Zio really pretty, uh, follow me for more. Um, Today I'll present a library or a micro framework called Zio Backtask, um, as it has a cool name, but uh, it actually originates uh, from the Zio task that you probably are familiar with. Uh, so I tried to add the backend to that task uh, and hopefully move the computation out of Zio and then back to Zio when needed. Um, if I go next. So yeah, you need to have like a cool quote uh, in your presentation. I found this one when I was Googling for opportunity. Um, what I see with Zio in general is the opportunity that uh, there are so many possibilities in the ecosystem and the libraries that could be built or could be transferred from other languages to Zio world and then empower new projects on top of it. And um, when I was looking through the ecosystem and I was trying to build some, some application for myself, I found out that it would be really interesting to have uh, such functionality that you're gonna see here, and I'm gonna explain what, where this thing actually lies in. Um, so this is a very, very, very simple Zio application that you can build yourself. Uh, we have a simple Zio application that boots up and it sends an email. Uh, when you boot it up, as soon as it's available, it's gonna send an email. It doesn't actually have the implementation for sending email, but it just logs it out. And um, then a product manager comes and it says, right, we need to have some kind of delay, so we're gonna send this email after five seconds, and then print out that the email was sent. Again, this is something very common if you use Zio to delay stuff and put them back in support. Um, but then you're, your code kind of like evolves further and further and gets more complicated and you get additional requirements. Um, so it's possible that, uh, well, theoretically you can delay these tasks for, you know, not just milliseconds or seconds, you can delay them for five minutes, days, or perhaps even weeks or something like that, right? Um, so in this case, I would wait five minutes, three, uh, or even 14 days to actually send this email out. During this time, obviously, I cannot make any additional work. And uh, obviously, I don't want to block the whole application with this stuff. And uh, the challenge now is how can I move this, app, this task of sending email somewhere that it will actually execute in that amount of time? And what do I need to do to, uh, in order to do that? Um, so this is how this uh, Zio backtask works. Um, this sending of email uh, task now becomes this case class. Um, I put the arguments of receiving, receiver and title, in, as you can see in the, on the top. And then I have to use these, uh, these other functions called perform a sync, perform in, or, and you also have some additional flags such as in what queue you actually wanna, wanna execute this in. So, now, if you run this application, it will create these tasks and it will schedule them for a later execution, but you can still do other work uh, afterwards, right? Um, again, these are three main, main, main components. That if you ever use Zio or any of the Zio libraries, it doesn't really um, stand out that differently. It's very, very Zio-ish. Um, Okay, behind the scenes, what I have to do to do this, obviously you need to have your Zio application. Um, we need to get that information, what kind of task you wanna execute. We then deconstruct that information and we enqueue um, that into uh, a message that is sent to the Redis. And then on the other side, you also need to have a worker that will pull this information down and actually execute a Zio task within the context of your application. And if you wanna have some tasks that um, perhaps should be retried or should be executed in you know, somewhere else, uh, it's a good idea to also have a third component here, uh, in this case, uh, some kind of scheduler. Um, I'll now show you three examples of what it needs to happen in these uh, components. Um, don't worry too much, uh, all this code is available on GitHub and you can study it in your own. 
Um, but yeah, the first part is uh, what needs to be done when you enqueue this work. So as I said, we need to understand what the task will actually do, what are the parameters that this task needs. Um, and then we need to understand to what queue should we put this uh, stuff in. Um, just to make things easier, we have two queues. One queue is, a queue is for immediate execution, and another is for delayed task. Um, and behind the scenes, we also need to serialize these tasks. Uh, currently, the, the, the project uses a circ to actually convert it to JSON, but obviously some kind of uh, more more appropriate library should be used, for example, Zio schema or something else, uh, again, to be discussed. Uh, and then you need to have this scheduler that will try to, that reads the queues and tries to understand if the time is right to actually put the pending queues to the working queue and actually execute the stuff. And you need to have at least one instance of this schedule, uh, scheduler running in your system. Um, here's a little side note that you need to have some kind of locking mechanism that assures that only one instance of this is running. Behind the scenes, this library uses Redis, so it's heavily dependent on Redis. And uh, this um, putting stuff, uh, scheduling stuff, uh, retrying stuff, a lot of this stuff is, can be done purely with Redis functions. And then the third part, as I said, is this worker. So this worker then uh, scans the queues, tries to figure out which queues are in use, uh, pulls the data out of the queues, and then actually tries to execute this, uh, this work within, your, within the context of your application. And uh, as you can see this arrow there, uh, this is the point where it actually runs this, uh, this, this, this task. Um, if it fails, we can retry within this handler or whatever, or we can put it into the queue back and then reschedule it to the very later date or something like that. Um, so in a nutshell, Zio backtask has these functions. Um, you, have, uh, you have a way of defining uh, a queue either in, in when you invoke or put this task into to, to the queue, or you can define it within the case class. Um, you have this additional functions such as when do you want this to be performed, or if you want to delay several tasks, etc. Um, very like minimalistic interface for this stuff. Um, what are other opportunities that uh, this could bring? So um, it needs to be simple, um, and it needs to be like very easy to use, as, as hopefully I demonstrated that. But if you have really simple tasks that you can put behind the scenes, and if you can also define some dependencies perhaps with this, it opens up a lot of very interesting opportunities. One of such opportunities, for example, would be that you can define these tasks, and with simple DSL such as demonstrated here, you can, put, uh, you can chain these tasks together. So if in this G1 example, I'm gonna say A, and then I'm gonna say B, and these are all going to be, be executed uh, concurrently uh, in the back end, in, in behind the scenes. Uh, or you can build this with these nice little arrows. You can say, after this task is done, then do the another task and another task. So, which means that you can build like really complicated uh, um, graphs of tasks if you want. Um, what else could be done in terms of this? So, this solution of this project, you can see. Um, it really depends on Redis, but if only a couple of these functions from Redis are actually used, one interesting opportunity would be to completely, for example, remove Redis out of the, the, the combination and just rewrite the, other, the part for the server, um, also with probably with Scala or Zio. And that would probably mean that this part would be eliminated altogether. Um, if you have these kind of long running a task, and if you need to retry, for example, sending emails, etc., some kind of user interface might also be useful so that you can see better what's happening behind the scenes. Um, another opportunity that I see with us is like uh, you can make this perhaps even more cloud native. So perhaps uh, you can use some kind of other schedule behind the scenes, um, might be pluggable or something like that. And that would also mean that uh, perhaps you don't even need Redis or some other mechanisms that we would need to build ourselves, but uh, you could leverage uh, more cloud-native approaches on this as well. Um, okay, so uh, the whole
code and the whole state of the project is, as, as John said earlier, this is like third party ecosystem project for now. Um, I'm still probing a few things. I'm still experimenting with this uh, element, uh, especially serialization, deserialization, making sure that queuing actually works as it should be, retries, all that. There is a lot to it. Um, but yeah, I tried to, to, to get this thing going. And if uh, you're curious more uh, how this works, all the code and much better examples than the one that I showed today are available there. And you can find me on Twitter and email is there. And uh, yeah, I would like to invite you to contribute or perhaps uh, exchange some words about it. Yeah, that's going to be my talk. <laughs> Thank you.